climate change scientists have been hard at work over the past few decades. What's kept them busy is trying to convince the world that climate change is indeed a fact. A fact that was recently discussed at the highest level during the 21st Conference of Parties or COP21 in Paris, France. For the first time in over 20 years of UN negotiations, members of the conference aim to achieve a legally binding and universal agreement on climate with the target of keeping global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. The economic hub of Johannesburg is one of the biggest greenhouse gas emitters on the African continent. The city of Johannesburg has taken a view that we're part of the global community that needs to address the future of our climate, uh, of our planet rather, and the interest of not just current but future generations, and that we have a critical contribution to make. Johannesburg is one of the highest emitters of greenhouse gas emissions and we have a duty to make our contribution towards the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and the, the effect of climate change we can feel already. Uh, our current experience as Johannesburgers is that we are beginning to experience increased intensity of rain and an increase in the rainy season. So we've seen the climate change patterns uh, uh, in our city and the reality that that impacts on our city. And the effect is about uh, the impact of, on our stormwater drainage systems. We've planned for, uh, we've continuously had to adapt our flood lines from one in 25 years to one in 50 to one in 100 years because the, the level of rainfall has increased. Uh, the reality that we've also expanded in an urban environment means that we also finding increased flash floods, particularly as we facing greater pressure and that's, made, that's a reality we have to deal with. So from that point of view, we already know that we're dealing with the effects of climate change. We are currently in the early parts of the summer season, are experiencing a fairly long drought season that's impacting on, on, on the city uh, and indeed on the entire country. So, so it, in many ways we can say that uh, we're living through the effects of climate change. It's about what we do about climate change both from a mitigation point of view. And mitigation is about what we're doing through the buildings, through waste management, through alternative energy that we're rolling out. And adaptation is the more difficult reality that we need to deal with. To deal with. We now need to expand the stormwater networks that we've built. The stormwater drainage system is not designed for the level of rain that we're experiencing. So we need to be able to expand it. We need to... It, to, re, to rework our infrastructure to adapt to this reality, whether it's roads, stormwater, electricity infrastructure, areas that were not servitudes before now need to be dedicated to servitudes for different reasons in our city. So this reality is something that we need to do about. And from an adaptation point of view, put in place the mechanisms that ensures that our city is able to deal with the, the impact of climate change. He takes us through some of the initiatives aimed at reducing Johannesburg's greenhouse gas emissions. We've already used uh, programs such as um, waste to energy. We're already um, uh, flaring some of the waste at our landfill sites. We've gotten our license for the generation of electricity. We're now, we're now actually busy working on ensuring that we can generate electricity into the grid from our landfill sites. We've also looked at energy at our wastewater treatment works using the sludge to generate electricity. We're already generating electricity through sludge at our wastewater treatment works and we're quite excited about that. Um, the next program that we're working on, we've currently gone out on tender, on tender rather, is a program that is called impact turbines. And these are uh, turbines that use the bulk water systems, um, the potable water systems to be able to generate. So use the pressure of your water distribution network to generate electricity. And this technology enables us to do two things. It enables us to generate electricity, and in the second instance, it, enable, it enables us to manage the water pressure that we have. So it serves as a water pressure management system. So that's the next level of technology we're working on. Another program that's been very important is the conversion of uh, our Metropass fleet, we've started with uh, converting our Metropass fleet from diesel run engines to currently now, the new fleet is coming on a dual fuel hybrid system 
that uses compressed natural gas uh, and diesel. Um, and as soon as we have, because we're working with the University of Johannesburg on generating gas from biogas uh, through feedstock that's generated at a local, at a local level, and uh, the project is almost complete, we can easily convert these buses into biogas driven buses. The city of Johannesburg has partnered with industry players, encouraging an all-round shift towards eco-friendly initiatives. I spoke earlier about the role of business, particularly on the conversion of buildings and the new buildings coming up in Johannesburg. That has been very important. They've made a major contribution towards the reductions we've already achieved in Johannesburg, so they've been an important partner in this regard. But we also have other industries that sometimes we take for granted. In fact, one of the first users of compressed natural gas has been the minibus taxi industry. <laughs> They've been the first to buy into the technology and are using it in Johannesburg and it's been a successful pilot site. So we look at industry both from the large industry point of view and from the small industry point of view. But then there are also those that uh, generate large uh, uh, or are, are rather large contributors, contributors to greenhouse gas emissions and we're working with them to find solutions to their production lines. In many ways, for those who are working on an industry by industry basis and in certain instances on a company by company uh, relationship. Johannesburg is running out of landfill airspace and projects are already underway to reduce, reuse and recycle. Pick It Up is Johannesburg's official waste management service provider, servicing 4 million people each year. The majority of waste we generate as the city of Joburg, our current modality is we take it to a landfill site. And landfill sites by their very nature, you know, emit uh, uh, various emissions into the air, which affects the, the, the quality of the air quality and obviously has negative effects on the environment. Uh, you know, and it's not just about climate change as well, it's about the inconvenience and, and quality of life of people living and, and, and doing other things, activities around those landfill sites. Um, and ultimately the, the notion of waste being sent to landfill sites is a, is a contradiction in an environment where that waste can be used for economic benefit. Pick It Up employees went on an illegal strike over salaries and working conditions for two weeks, during which time it was all hands on deck to keep Johannesburg clean. Well, first of all, I think it's important to say to the people of Johannesburg that it's quite regrettable that we find ourselves in a situation where there's been, I think, a strike organized without, without any due arrangements, without due notice to the organization. But not only that there's a strike, that people have uh, dis, uh, uh, regarded the uh, court order uh, when in fact the strike wasn't uh, uh, necessarily uh, properly arranged and uh, as, as the employer was not informed. Waste presents an economic opportunity for South Africa to reduce poverty, inequality and unemployment. We're no longer a company that just comes around and collects your, your waste and takes it to a landfill site. We are transforming uh, into what we call waste minimization as the model for managing waste. And our, big, our, our sort of flagship program there is separation at source, which calls for residents and businesses and every other uh, sector of society to start to separate out their waste. Because paper as a, as a waste stream has value and can be recycled. Plastic as a waste stream has value and can be recycled. Glass as a waste stream has value and can be recycled. And as I'm talking about these things, you must now imagine them in the context that they're coming out of your bin in your kitchen. So. As, as we increasing the volumes that are being recycled and pulling out various waste streams, then the, the volume of waste, at what we would call residual waste, is minimized and, and that's what ultimately ends up at the landfill. So our, our efforts between now and 2040, where we have to have only 7% of the total 1.8 million tons generated per annum now going to landfill, um, is, is sits largely on that particular program separation at source. 
we've, we've started the program in many parts of the city. We'll be extending quite uh, robustly and dramatically, you know, very radical shift now into the high income areas. We started in the low income areas and we started in the low income areas largely because that's where you have your highest levels of poverty and unemployment. So to provide economic opportunities, um, we're now talking about uh, food waste, organic waste as well, or wet waste as well as domestic garden refuse. Johannesburg is taking the concept of creating a green economy further. They call it the blue economy. In the city of Joburg, we talk about green and blue economy because we're working with an organization called ZERI, headed by Professor Kunta Pauli, uh, and they've worked on technologies that uh, in many instances are cheaper uh, and more innovative uh, that can contribute towards uh, growing the economy but reducing greenhouse gas emissions and building a different ecosystem. Uh, I spoke earlier about the turbines that uh, we're talking about, uh, the in-pipe turbines that use that, that's been through this program. We're also talking about bread as an area. What we're currently looking at is uh, uh, a problem with regards to the distribution network and the production of our bread could actually be an opportunity through pop-up bakeries that are there in communities and thus reducing the cost of a primary, primary food stock uh, or rather food requirement in our community uh, through the reduction of logistics and thus the price of bread and generating electricity through a dual system that uses uh, solar power, power energy for the production of both electricity and uh, heated water. So these are different technologies that we're including in one project that achieves multiple objectives. That's why when we talk about the initi initiatives we're planning with ZERI and implementing with ZERI, we're talking about ecosystems, about the production of bread, and we look at it as an entire ecosystem. When you look about at waste, for example, we look at the situation where the bulk of the waste at our landfill sites is actually building rubble but then there's a technology that exists that converts the building rubble into paper. So stone paper is a technology that we're looking at. So we're addressing the problem of landfill sites through generating a new set of industries that produce paper. So that's the new technology we're working on. Some of these are on implementation phase and some of them are on business case development stage.